All right. In this lecture, we are going to continue with the factors that influence chemical shifts. This is influence, not influencing. Factors that influence chemical shift or factors influencing ing chemical shift now one of the factors that we are going to look at is what we call the electronegativity that's a factor that we are going to look at that influence chemical shifts electronegativity now this factor is called the shielding and the shielding effect So you may be asked, shielding and deshielding occur as a result of electronegativity. Now, what is electronegativity? Electronegativity is the ability of atoms to withdraw electrons to themselves. Right? Now, let's come to terms with ourselves. Let's understand something. Now, you have a nucleus. Let's say this is a nucleus right now listen we said that this nucleus actually um is actually processing or is spinning right based on the electrons around it according to what we said we said based on the electrons around it this nucleus is what spinning listen oh when an external magnetic field is attached, first of all, the external magnetic field is opposite to this spinning nucleus. You know this one has a small magnetic field. Right? This one now is the large magnetic field. Now, what did we say is responsible for this small magnetic field? We said is the electrons around the nucleus what is responsible for the small magnetic field i have explained this before that the electrons around it because electrons are charges and we said that magnetism is what movement of charges because electrons are around this what are you expecting or there are charges generally electrons are around this so what are you actually expecting you are expecting the nucleus to be spinning we said or to actually have a magnetic field around it due to the presence of those electrons that's what we establish right now due to the presence of the electrons around the spinning nucleus it has a small magnetic field around it so if a large magnetic field is coming you know the large magnetic field what will happen to it if you add a large magnetic field here what did you say will happen this one now will now spin it can either align against the magnetic field or align with it. I will say that is what is responsible for the word precessional frequency. And listen, the higher the precessional frequency, eh, the higher the chemical shift. The higher the precessional frequency of the compound of the nucleus, the higher the chemical shift. That's what we've established now. Exactly. Because we say chemical shift is the precessional frequency of the compound minus that of TMS divided by that of the operating machine. So if the precessional frequency of the compound is high, because it's more like you have 10 minus 2 over 2. Right? If this one is high, let's say this is that of the compound. This is TMS. This is of the compound. I'm just using this to illustrate to you. This will be 10 minus 2 over 2, which is what? Uh, 8 over 2. 8 divided by 2 will give us what? 4. Right? Now, let us say this precessional frequency of the compound. This is the chemical shift now in this case is 4. Let's say the precessional frequency of the compound is 6. So here will be 6 minus 2 divided by 2 which is equal to 6 minus 2 is what? 4 divided by 2. This will give us what? 4 divided by 2 will give us equals to 2. Are you getting it now? That 2 now is the precessional frequency of i mean is the chemical shift for a compound which profession a uh, precessional frequency is six why four is the chemical shift of a compound which precessional frequency is what 10. so you now discover that the higher the precessional frequency the higher the chemical shift do you understand that 
the higher the precessional frequency, the higher the chemical shift. Do you get it now? Exactly. Now, but there is something. How do we now ascertain the precessional frequency? What do we say the precessional frequency? We say the precessional frequency is the frequency with which the nucleus will actually spin. And how do you determine it? Is when you apply a large magnetic field. We say every nucleus that will actually undergo NMRO have a small magnetic field around it by virtue of the electrons surrounding it. Is that okay? So when you put a large magnet, you expect to have what? The frequency at which this one will start to spin. But let me tell you, eh? let me just give you this. If this magnet, these two uh, um, magnets, the large magnet and the small magnetic field, the large magnetic field you're actually applying and the small magnetic field that was present initially, they are opposite each other. So they usually cancel at each other. But of course, the large one will overpower. Are you getting it now? The large one will what? Overpower. And that is what will now give rise to your precessional frequency. So you have small magnet, large magnet. Where is this small magnet coming from? Based on the electrons surrounding that nucleus. Where is this one coming from? This one is a stannar magnetic field. These two will actually determine the what? The precessional frequency of that compound. And the higher the precessional frequency, the higher the what? The chemical shift. Right? Now, this is where electronegativity now comes in. Now, listen. I told you that these two uh, magnetic fields are, are actually cancelling at each other. And the net magnetic field, eh? The higher the net magnetic field, the higher the net magnetic field that results from this small magnet and this large magnet, the higher the precessional frequency. So what we are actually looking at is the net magnetic field. Are you getting it? The higher the net magnetic field, the higher the precessional frequency. What gives rise to the large, uh, to the precessional frequency? Net magnetic field. What gives rise to net magnetic field? The small magnet and the large magnet. Now, most times, this large magnet is usually what? Constant, like 1.4 Tesla. Are you getting it? The large magnet is usually what? Constant. But what changes is the small magnet. And the small magnet, we say, is as a result of the electrons around a particular compound. Are you getting it? That is the chemical environment of that proton, rather. Let's say the chemical environment of that. Let me not be using proton because if you are using proton, that is not seem as if it's restricted to protons only. No. It's actually determined by the chemical environment of the nucleus. The chemical environment. The more the electrons in the chemical environment, what causes the magnet is electrons. What causes the magnet is the word electrons. Are you getting it? The more the electrons. Now, if there are more electrons around, let's say this is a proton. Let me use this as the proton. Now, if there are more electrons around this proton, there are electrons everywhere. Now, it means this one, we have a very large magnetic field. Now, because of this large magnetic field, you see that this proton here is actually shielded by this what magnetic field. So, the external magnetic field you are applying will not have much influence. Why? Because there is a big magnet here already surrounding it. So, when you are bringing an external magnetic field, it's not going to have much influence. And, of course, what did I tell you? That you have a small magnet, large magnet. When you subtract small ma a large magnet from I mean small magnet from large magnet, you get the net magnetic field. The higher the net magnetic field, the higher the precessional frequency. Now let's look at it from this angle. If the magnetic field around this is high, we are not saying when we say high, it cannot be as high as the external. But if let's say you have let's use two nucleus. 
one has a small let's say the magnetic field is a 1.4 tesla let's just use this the large magnetic field now let's say the small magnetic field around one nucleus like i told you what is responsible for this small magnet is the chemical environment and be good so let's say this small nucleus have because of, by virtue of the electrons surrounding it it has let's say um a magnetic field the magnetic field from this small magnet is around 0 0.4 what do you think will be the net of course recall that the standard magnet is 1.4 tesla let's just assume that this one is 0 0.4 net magnet now will be what how many tesla 1.0 tesla is that okay now let us say you have another magnet another nucleus that the magnetic field around it is so small because the electrons are not surrounding it you know like i said what actually brings this magnetic field around this nucleus is the chemical environment that means the number of electrons actually around it right now let's say electrons are not surrounding this one hmm? if electrons are not surrounding this one now what does that mean it means that the magnetic field that will, this one will actually be what will be bringing will be very very small so the shielding when we talk about shielding that means what this particular nucleus here will be shielded just small why this one because of the electrons that are around this so many things are around this bringing electron is enclosed is highly shielded you say this one is what highly shielded why this one now is the shielded are you getting it is the shielded are you getting it that means not uh, uh, is less shielded let me use that word less shielded eh maybe because of there are less electrons around it this one is less shielded and what did you think what do you think which of them do you think will have a higher magnetic field of course told you that the magnetic field has a virtue of the electrons around it or the chemical environment the things around here if the things around here the electrons around here are very very small what are you expecting a very small magnetic field which is 0 0.1 of course we said that this 1.4 for the standard magnetic field does not change but what changes is the is the uh chemical environment of the what of the nucleus you actually are ascertaining so let's say uh, this small magnet now for the next proton is 0 0.1 so 1.4 minus 0 0.1 that is going to give us what 1.3 tesla so which of them have a net magnetic field you see that the one that is less shielded have a higher magnetic field the one that is less shielded now when you say this less shielded it means that this external magnet have high effects on it why this one because there are bodyguards around it the standard magnet have a lesser effect as compared to this one so this one is shielded this one is what less shielded now the most less shielded it is the higher the net magnetic field do you understand the higher the what net magnetic field the more shielded it is the lower the what net magnetic field and we said that the higher the net magnetic field, the higher the precessional frequency. The higher the precessional frequency, the higher the what? The chemical shift value. The lower the net magnetic field, the lower the precessional frequency. The lower the precessional frequency, the lower the what? Chemical shift values. So you can actually see that if a particular nucleus is shielded, it will have a low chemical shift. If a nucleus is less shielded or deshielded, it will have a high chemical shift. Why? Because the external magnetic field will have a high influence and the net magnetic field will be high, the precessional frequency will be high, the what? Chemical shift will be what? Be high. So what we are actually looking at for now are atoms that can remove those things shielding the nucleus from it to make it less shielded that's what we are looking at in electronegativity now what did we say electronegativity is 
we say electronegativity is what is the ah okay let it go we say electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to withdraw electrons to itself right that's what we actually agree on electronegativity now these are very different chemical shift value based on the increased electronegativity of course you all agree with me that fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table then you have in this group here fluorine is more electronegative followed by chlorine followed by bromine followed by iodine of course this is tetramethylsilane i told you that tetramethylsilane is usually giving a chemical shift value of what 0.0, .0. now my dear students the question now is how do we how does electronegativity influence it you now see that as the electronegativity of the atom attached increases the chemical shift value what increases why because electronegativity the shield a proton do you understand electronegativity the shield it makes the proton less shielded what causes that small magnetic field i said electrons around it the chemical environment do you understand? But now something is coming to take those electrons away. You have CH3. This is the uh, let's use these two, iodine and fluorine. That of iodine. They said it's iodine, not iodine. It's iodine. You have something like this, and then you have another one like this: fluorine, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Now this is the chemical environment of these protons here. Now, listen, we said what causes this magnetic field here is what? The electrons around it, right? The electrons around it. Anything that will remove these electrons makes this magnetic field to be small. And the smaller the magnetic field, what happens? The net magnetic field will what? Increase. The increase in net magnetic field will lead to increase in precessional frequency. If precessional frequency increase, what will happen? Chemical shift will what? Increase. Are you getting the idea now? So what the fluorine actually does is withdraw electron from this compound. Yeah, it withdraws the electron. And because it withdraws the electron, it makes this one to be less shielded or we can say it deshielded it and because it deshielded it it means the net magnetic field will be what high that means this standard magnetic field we have a higher effect on this as compared to this do you get it the fluorine remove it they remove and come out you get it it's removing it do you get it it's removing it Removing all the electron. So, had it been this thing, this fluid, we are not there. Let's say the uh, uh, magnetic field is as big as something like this. But because the fluorine is actually there, removing all this, the fluorine is there removing the electron, this magnetic field around this may now be very small. So, instead of it to be as big as that, it may now be as small as this. And of course, as it's making it small, what will happen? Net magnetic field increase, precessional frequency increase, chemical shift what increase. Do you get it? So you can say that electronegative atom the shields, the shields, the shields a proton, and by removing the electrons, thereby reducing the what the uh, uh, magnetic field around it. This phenomenon is called what deshielded so when you say a compound that is deshielded what do you think a, a proton that is deshielded will the chemical shift value be high or low of course the chemical shift value will be what will be high when you say deshield it means they remove the shield when they're there around them and the more they remove the shield the more the more magnetic field the more the magnetic field that will it will be that will be felt what happened because this small magnetic field when they get here it work now actually to just protect is to protect are you getting it so that the external magnetic field will not get there but we know that the higher the standard magnetic field felt the higher the precessional frequency the higher the precessional frequency the higher the what chemical shift value now if you look at iodine iodine is not as electronegative as compared to what fluorine 
of course you look at this it means when florin is taking let's say my electric withdrawing a lot to himself iodine is withdrawing some more so even if there's an electric field around this before iodine will only reduce it a little are you getting it because L iodine does not withdraw much electron like it does not have that force to withdraw as compared to what fluorine so you see that iodine chemical sheet values are low as compared to this why because in case of iodine there will still be a little bit of high magnetic field around this so that it will still be protecting but that of fluorine fluorine can even remove almost everything yes so that this one goes the naked attack the shielding this external magnetic field can attack when precession frequency increase then chemical shift value increase and you see as the um what is it called as the sheet here is increasing the magnetic field i mean the electronegativity of the atom attached is increasing the higher the what chemical shift is that okay so that's the idea of shielding and the shielding so when they say give with reasons why you say this particular compound is more so if they give you between ch3i and ch3f which one will have a higher chemical shift value of course you know this one will be at around 4.26 why because it is deshielded more by the electronegative atom these are the rationale behind it as compared to what the iodine which is deshielded less is that okay so that is that for shielding and deshielding thank you very much for your time we'll see you in the next one